Okay, so today's video is going to be a little bit different from what I normally do hunting and fishing. Um, definitely out of my comfort zone. And I'm going to be working with um, just a simple uh, 3 8 inch router. And I'm going to be taking a, a cross section of a tree, top, tree trunk and turn it into a hydrological map. So that's the tie in back to the, the hunting and fishing. Um, and what I've set up here, and you see I've already kind of started a little bit, is um, a router sled. And um, we'll show how that works in the beginning, or in a, in a second. But in the beginning, what you need to do is we need to take two really straight uh, edges. And what I've got here is actually um, what I've got here is actually uh, backsplash that uh, is ceramic in nature. It's uh, it's very very straight and I attached a 2x4 to it and the reason for that is so when we're uh, when we're routering I don't nick this if I nick anything I'm gonna nick the 2x4 and I did the same thing on the other end and um, how I uh, the important part here is to get these two straight and I started off by leveling my table and I've got these level and now when I take the sled and I put the sled on these rails. And you can see here um, what I did for the sled is is I've got uh, one by ten inch uh, chunk of red oak, very straight. I attached to it three quarter inch plywood, and just enough so that the router can fit on it. And as I come across and pull across, I'm able to take off about three quarters um, to a half an inch with each swipe. Um, I don't go too deep, the depth is consistent, and as I come across and push the sled across each time, um, I'm making sure that it's level. Because I'm making this into, a, turning this into a hydrological map, it's not really, really important that this is, this is super straight right now because we're going to continue to take out more. Uh, we'll sand that out, and you're, gonna, you're looking at these and seeing, well, there's a lot of cracks in here, and we'll show how to take care of those as well. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and show you how to do this. Uh, eye protection and ear protection is key. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. And each time I stop, I'll take the air compressor and uh, I'll blow my dust off. You want to make sure the dust is off from underneath here. Um, if you're starting to ride up on the sawdust, it actually can get you to ride up on the log and you won't have an even cut. So because we're going to be taking and making this into um, a contour map, a hydrological map that's going to show depths, this doesn't have to be sanded. If I was going to make this into a tabletop, all I would do is take a belt sander, and after I'm all done, I just sand this and, um, and fill it in um, as necessary. Uh, on the back side of it, uh, maybe attach some plywood so it doesn't crack, which is a big problem in any of these projects. If you look here, you can see I've got a lot of cracks that I'm going to have to take care of, and um, we'll go ahead and uh, show you how to do that later. But uh, for, by and large, this is, uh, this is it, and I'm going to continue to, uh, to go through this, excuse me, and um, so by and large, this is it. Um, I will continue to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set a, about a half inch away, set my clamps, ear protection, eye protection, and left to right once. One last thing to look at is the, uh, is the router bit itself. And uh, I apologize, I don't know the exact uh, name of the router bit, um, but it is a, it does have just two blades on it. Um, comes down about a, a, oh, comes down about three quarters of an inch, I believe. And uh, this is only a three eighths inch uh, router. Um, Ryobi is a good name. Um, you have a half inch is common, and you're a little bit more flexible, a little bit more power uh, with those blades. But I found that this has been fine for what I've done. I've made, uh, I've leveled off about six or seven of these and that seems to be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get busy finishing up the rest of these and um, we'll, pick up, uh, we'll pick up with that when we're done. Okay, so you can see we're getting to the uh, actual routing 
and um, you've got a map here and I said where do you get a map that big I actually took this map um, had it blown up at Staples and got it to the right size it took them a little while but they finally got it blown up to the uh, correct size and um, I used some tape to reinforce it here put in some nails I think to do it over again I would have spent five dollars got the whole thing laminated it would have held up a little better it gets a little flimsy here you see I've got a I've had to tape it a little bit um, but I've got uh, four points and nails um, put a nail on the back side and um, how how you have to do it is you have to do the deepest part first and um, the reason for that is so that your router actually can can sit if you did the shallow part um, then you, your router as you're moving across would start hitting stuff so you have to do the deepest part first and you see I did uh, I got some holes here and um, well and there's a little trick to that in terms of, of you know getting those depths correct so I'm gonna go over and show you how I played with it and you'll see I I made a couple mistakes um, I actually started playing with it here in terms of my depth and uh, you can see I started up here at 50 feet for my contour line was going to be um, I think it was a um, three quarters of an inch and then as I started laying it out I just ran out I thought well nobody's gonna be able to notice that so I decided what I'm gonna do is uh, go a little bit deeper so I went to an inch that wasn't deep enough and you see I decided for 50 feet it's an inch and a quarter 40 feet is an inch and etc and I threw 25 in here at the end um, and then what you can do is uh, I'm taking my router and uh, I just set the router here and then I just adjusted it down to the correct depth and then every time you want to uh, you know you want to set it I just put it in the correct spot and um, my next spot is going to be 30 you see um, I was working right here at, uh, at about 30 oh, 35 feet here and, uh, and that's another thing you can kind of play in between if you want to do that but uh, so that was that set up and um, back to the back to the the covering as, as you're, you're doing this always go left to, to right with your router and uh, as I as I made my uh, my cut to the outside here it's actually the lake continues to go on that way um, it blows that way because it, the, the router bit is spinning this way um, it blows this way and I just found sitting here and blowing towards your opening keeps it uh, keeps it a lot cleaner and a lot better and um, you got your air compressor and um, it, it don't have to use it as much um, when you start off you're gonna have to use it and you can actually pick it out with your hands um, one thing I did invest in is uh, router bit it's a uh, two flute straight a quarter inch shank and as you can see it is uh, it has a inch cutting depth and you may have noticed I went to a, a little bit longer than an inch inch and a quarter um, I just pulled it out of the seating a little bit I don't wouldn't recommend that I'd recommend spending the money and, and getting the inch and quarter that fits um, rather than do what I'm doing what I'm doing isn't very safe but I had already purchased the bit and um, and still done the setting um, um, for an inch and then I realized that wasn't enough so um, that's where we're uh, that's where we're at and patience as we go around these little spots here um, little chunks left to right little chunks because they will chip and um, I had one little chip right there uh, and now I'm going to have to take that down a little bit further also. Just tiny little chips as you go across little chunks. Don't. So um, I take the knife and um, I just cut this out and then I trace my next line. And then when I'm ready, and I am just about ready, I'll pull this up and I'll write my line in as I've drawn right here to my next line I'll know where to route so I'm gonna continue to uh, so actually this is my next cut I'm gonna go to 28 as you can see here so I'm gonna pull this up take it off the nail roll it back and that's gonna be my next cut at 28 feet so I'll take that away to 28 and um, go around that at 24 
these are actually supposed to, supposed to be at 28 so I'm just going to be really really careful as I very carefully take those out but uh, that is the gist um, and you say well why have you still got it on the uh, why well, you got the levelers on the outside who knows who knows what I'll need those for don't take those off yet um, theoretically I could take these off and just have the table because I'm not doing anything um, with it uh, but um, I'm going to leave it in case I need it and then we're going to keep going ahead and uh and making our contour lines and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes so um, how did we start that first cut so my deepest hole in the whole thing here is uh, is 50 feet how do we do that well I took my uh, I took my drill uh, this is actually set at 40 feet and um, took my drill and I put tape right at 40 feet and uh, I did this at 50 feet also, but then I reset um, at 40. So once I've got the tape here, then I just drill down to where the tape is. Then I can set my bit inside there and go. Once you've got the deepest, I had three deep holes. Once those holes are done, then you can take your your um, bit and do the rest of the rest of the way and pull those out. But uh, that's how we uh, that's how we set the depth for that first cut. Okay, uh, it's, it's been a while, we made some progress uh, since the last uh, clip. Um, we tried to stain, so we're going to do the contours and stain. And because of the flakiness, here it's a little punky here, because of the flakiness of the wood, we decided to paint. So before I painted, um, what I did is uh, I took Gorilla Glue and, um, and kind of spread, uh, spread it into the grain. And we're talking about down in here. And then um, uh, with a stick, I just used a shim and pushed down in the grain and uh, kind of let that uh, shore up the cracks, fill in the cracks. Uh, these right here were actually a lot of cracks right in there. And uh, let it expand and then sanded it down. And uh, Gorilla Glue is uh, paintable, stainable, and we decided to paint it. So um, I think the, the biggest mis mis decision I made that was... Uh, Looking back, I, I probably should have changed it up a little bit. Is I think I tried to get too accurate. I think I had too many levels, and the reason is the problem that caused is I couldn't get um, the change in the contrast in colors. You can maybe see this contrast all the way, but um, I I needed a contrast in between these two and these two, and I just didn't think I could do it. So here's our little setup. Um, I just used cans and uh, tuna and sealed them in bags so they still uh, they stay. Uh, usable as I touch things up here and I just couldn't find them uh, I just couldn't find the, the right mix to stand them out enough so I had to combine levels so these two are actually the same color uh, these two are the same color I think these two are the same color too and then we've got our, our deeper holes a different color so um, you know I'm, I don't regret it but um, maybe a little bit more forethought um, and I could have gotten the different colors a little better um, so I tried to, uh, let's, let's talk about this uh, polyurethane finish um, and then they actually put the map on. I debated whether or not even to put the map on here and I decided to. So um, I experimented off, off my project here and found that if you put down the polyurethane and then try to use, I just used a Sharpie, try to use a Sharpie to, to put on the roads, it didn't work. So I put all of these, all the roads are on here. Um, before I polyurethane and then I put coats of polyurethane and um, you can see where the uh, you know the polyurethane here I still got to put a couple coats you can't you can't see it but it's still a little bit of a gap there after enough coats those will all fill in and this will be smooth the idea is we're going to put a, a, a piece of glass over the top of it at the end um, for the uh, rivers I tried to use a blue sharpie looked great when it was dried but when we put the polyurethane polyurethane on it got too dark and didn't work so what I did is I just took the paint and put right on top of the the polyurethane we'll put another coat over everything including this um, and seal everything up really well so uh, that's how we did the rivers uh, this actually is a deep enough river that uh, that we routed that out um, these are just superficial and um, so that was that was it and now with the compass rose we if, if we took this uh, compass rose off here and you take a look at it from a distance there's kind of a lot of margin here that uh, that's not being used. So we're going to go ahead and put a compass rose here. And you may look at it and say, what's going on over here? We're actually going to put the, some kind of title or label 
that's going to go here. And this is little beta knock, so we'll just pay uh, upper little beta knock and um, possibly an elevation on there. Um, something that makes it look a little bit more like a map itself. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, this is the meticulous part. This is definitely not my strong point. I'm um, going through and you can see where I've got to, uh, we've got some touch up to do in here um, where we've, uh, where I've missed and we're trying to get the sides to match and you can see it's not, you know, it's a little bit, uh, where are we at here? There we go. It's a little bit rough. So taking the paint, taking the time and getting into all the little nooks and crannies, not the easiest thing in the world. Definitely takes some patience. Okay, so we're uh, putting the legs on and uh, what I'm using here, um, black pipe that you'd use for uh, for gas uh, gas line and it's one inch black pipe and these are flanges that you uh, that you can add and the great thing about these is um, I can adjust the uh, adjust the height uh, you can see I'm uh, I'm right on uh, level real close to level there and um, I actually can spin both of these so I got a little lay, uh, little leeway obviously you don't want them barely on I'll make it wobbly uh, so how did we do this? Well, you can see the table is uh, is clearly not level. You got this big gap right there, and um, so I started with the low point, kind of positioned them where I wanted, and uh, just kind of outlined them, and uh, got the uh, put the flanges in. And once I put the flanges in, you can see I put a, a circle here with the pipe. Um, I just want the piper. This makes it more accurate if we're just gonna we're gonna measure the pipe. So I found. Um, the lowest point and it was this one and then I just took a sander and I sanded it to level um, and so we got it here and just threw on my threw on my little level to get this um, to get this to where I want it and uh, once I was there I was able to uh, or then I then I just um, put this in place sanded it got this to level and um, and I was good. Now I didn't screw these in because I still want to take this and I'm going to go for each one to make those to level as well. So I started with that one and here I was able to sand it because it's pretty close. I just sanded it. I uh, used this little sander here, this little Rockwell unit. I uh, used a hand sander. Orbital sander would work great as well. Um, anything. Um, and um, got that to level with this. And again, just the pipes. Once I got the pipes in, um, then I went ahead and attached this one. This one's a little bit different. This one, you can see, I've got some more depth here. I had to uh, had to get down a little deeper. So I just drilled a pilot hole, and um, I kind of estimated with the level about how deep I had to go, and drilled a little pilot hole, and then I just took the router, and um, <clears throat> got the router to about the same depth that I uh, needed uh, based on my little estimate with the with the level and um, and then I just routed out you can see I actually did oh two or three four little little uh, trials before I got the right depth and didn't have to be absolute perfect you wanted I wanted most of it inside the bubble um, off a little bit and I can play with that at the end um, and I guess I should start the first thing I had to do was level this table. You can see I supported my leg, I bent my leg here. But I had to make sure this was level. If the table's not level, then um, none of my, my measurements up here are going to be level. So make sure that uh, you're starting off with level. The first time I did a table with legs, I actually put it on the, the floor in the house and, um, and made sure the floor was level and did it that way. Um, here we're going ahead and do it in the garage. Uh, so that's it. Um, we... Uh, um, so now what I'm going to do, and I'm, and I'm going to uh, got this here pretty close, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get this pretty close to level. It's pretty pretty close right there, but I'll just sand off a little bit, um, get this to level, and by looking both ways at it, I can see um, looks like I'm high here, and I can just eyeball it, and I can tell I'm high here and here. So I'll sand that down a little bit. Once I sand that down. Then I'm going to stand this, I'm going to stand these up, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Just so there, so I'm on, my, on the pipes only, and you can see I'm off. So what I'll do is, and you're not going to be able to see both, is I'm going to drop this down till I'm level. 
to go on this side. And then I know I've got to go down right there. I got to go down that much um, to get to level. So I'll drill the hole, pilot hole, a little bit deeper than that. And you can see the pilot hole there a little bit deeper is not going to hurt anything. And then I'll just take the router. And I don't want to go too much. You know, you're going to take a little bit at a time. And if anything, I'm going to leave this a tiny little bit high. Um, this was a little tiny little bit high. Just a fraction of the bubble was off. This was a little bit high um, because I can always um, go down. And um, I don't want this one to be my perfect one over here. So I'm going to stay with that one. So that's basically it. Now you may say, well, what about this end? What is, what is going on here? Well, what I did is every single one of these cracks that were significant, I put Gorilla Glue in. And the Gorilla Glue is just working out fantastic for me. Um, the Gorilla Glue uh, expands into the cracks, and then I can sand down the excess. You can see the tracks right here. That was Gorilla Glue. Um, it is Gorilla Glue, and I just sanded that off. So I'll sand this off and make it kind of a little pretty, but it doesn't matter. Um, nobody's going to see this. Um, I actually think uh, a little bit, being off a little bit, gives a little character, makes it a little bit more authentic. Um, we're not looking for something perfect here. Okay, just finished it up. Uh, <clears throat> We are, let's take a look, so we're, this is my first one, and um, you can see I'm uh, right there in the bubble. Now what I did is I did screw these down all the way. I'm not trying to make it level yet where we're at, so real close there. And the last one uh, is the one that's off the furthest, so that just means I'll have to adjust that one um, the most, and that's the great thing about these is um, I can adjust these so these all spin <coughs> so if I want to make this a little bit higher I can spin that a little bit and obviously again you don't want to take it off of the uh, um, off of the, the pipe or leave it there's a lot of weight here probably probably 130 pounds 140 pounds and um, but you can adjust these a little bit and there's two adjustments we can adjust down here as well so uh, I don't I didn't measure it I bet you we got a half inch of play so we can play with these if the floor is on level or the tables on level we can make this uh, make it right so that's uh <clears throat> that's it legs are installed I might just sand it that off uh, I will take the uh, I'll take the uh, side sander here and I'll just get that little bit of gorilla glue done um, and I did gorilla glue this in as well um, if anything I wanted the legs splayed out a little bit for stability so um, I shimmed this one just a tiny little shim um, you can see how much I used here. Um, I just took the end of the shim, put it under there, glued it in, uh, tightened these screws down tight, tightened those screws down tight, but the Gorilla Glue will really solidify it. And while I had it, I go, you know, why not put it in all of them? Um, I actually pulled these up, put the glue back down, and um, did the same thing here. So there's actually Gorilla Glue underneath all of those. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on these as you as we lift this up and flip it over um, you know inevitably you're going to put a little pressure especially if you got uh, some some rookies using these um, as you're rolling it over you'll put some pressure on those so you really want these to be stable um, the great news is if anything did happen and you had to take this out you can easily take the gorilla glue out it, it chips out really well with a chisel even a screwdriver and um, you could just rotate another base and, and redo a leg. But who wants to do that? Uh, ounce of prevention kind of thing. So um, that's it. And uh, we'll clean this up a little bit. And then the last thing is going to be to flip it over. And um, we've got some markers that we're going to put on. And um, we'll wrap this project up. Okay, here's the uh, oh, nearly finished project. Um, you see we put some plates on it. So I uh, had to go to the local trophy store to put these on, and we could label different parts of it. Um, kind of interesting with the uh, compass rows, I actually had to cut the rows off. Those are not attached. I had to cut those off and flip it upside down to make it fit. And uh, if I would have had to sink the whole thing, all the letters and that ring would have been um, sunk in too far. Uh, had to repaint it. I think the uh, uh, we tried to polyurethane the entire thing, and when we polyurethaned over the paint, it turned yellow, and uh, was not very good looking at all. So we uh, we took that off, 
Um, the glass. We had to order the glass online, and um, you can see we weren't perfectly round, so it goes out a little bit, but uh, it will protect it. Um, and uh, I think it's half inch uh, delivered to the house um, through eBay. Um, reasonable price, but uh, you know you do have to get to get it here, and you had to pay for the shipping, so uh, not not cheap, not giving it away. Um, but that's basically it. Um, came out about what I expected. Uh, the color contrast that I was worried about really didn't uh, didn't affect it as much as I thought. I still think we can see it. Um, I did add on some uh, some little extra paint here for to make it a little bit closer to what uh, what's real life. And um, if I decide to, I'm thinking maybe I'll add another. See, I've got uh, Highway Two here uh, labeled. Um, I may label it to a little bit here as well, put another little label there. Um, but uh, that was it. Fun project. Overall, I'd say uh, mm, 30 hours into it, my best guess. And um, any questions, feel free to, uh, to respond on the uh, comments of the video, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. We won't have an even cut. Now, because we're going to be taking and making this into a... Okay, so today we're going to be showing... Uh, I'm going to start over. Okay, today we're going to be taking a... Uh, what are the...